People want to know, uh, again, as I said, uh, what's really authentic and what's real and without a lot of slick stuff. So it, I tried to make the book as honest as I could and uh, something that really communicated the, who God was. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Things You Don't Hear in Church podcast. My name is Ethan. And my name is Derry. And guys, check us out on social media. We're all over the YouTube space, the Spotify and iTunes and Instagram, TikTok and all that stuff. Leave reviews and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Add some comments. That helps get it out there too to reach more people with the gospel. Yeah. Why well, y'all, today we have an awesome guest returning onto the show, the show, George Saris. He's the voice, if you've ever been on uh, the Bible out before you listen to the NIV, he's the voice of the NIV uh, Bible. Really awesome, kind of what I grew up listening to. Um, he's also done some other versions as well before. Uh, pretty cool. So like his voice has been in my head since since a child, so it's always awesome to talk to him and hear his voice again. Uh, he's a voice actor. Um, he's an author. Uh, he has other books that we've had him on to talk about. He's a speaker, an actor. He's got a YouTube channel that he posts a lot of good content to as well. Um, he has a master's degree in divinity. And today we're having him on to talk about his new book. Pretty brand new. Do you, uh, can you tell us when it was released? Yeah, it was, I think it was uh, January 27th of this year. Mm, there so you go. It's pretty new. Yeah. So in this fact, is the book right here. Last week, I, I uh, put up the audio version. I finally got a chance oh. to get the recorded uh since i'm the uh, narrator for it um <laughs> but it was i had a number of other books that i was narrating and other things i was doing and never got a chance to get to it and finally got it done and it was there you go was, i think last a week ago monday i think is when i mm. put it up something like that anyway mm. cool well the book is called uh searching for truth in vegas hollywood and bethlehem it's pretty interesting uh we gave it a look over and we really enjoyed it we think it really fits a uh, a niche for a lot of people trying to get into this this certain topic. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what it was like, like your inspiration for making the book and the process that you went through making it? Yeah, a um, long time ago, I was uh, reading in scripture and uh, I, I thought normally people think of faith, the, the definition of faith as Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, which says that uh, faith is the, um, uh, what is it? Uh, the conviction of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, something like that. But that's actually a description of faith. It's not really the definition. The definition is in chapter 11, verse 6, where it says, he who comes to God must do two things. He must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Well, I concluded at the time that uh, that meant that you needed to believe that God is real mm. and that God is good. If he if you come to seek him, he's not going to push you away. He won't punish you. He won't ignore you. He'll actually reward you. That's God is good. That was what my first book was about. And then this book is about that part of, is God real? In fact, the subtitle of the book is The Quest to Discover If God is Real. And as I thought about it more and more, I just realized that um, people today are just desperately looking for something that's authentic. They're not looking yeah. for slick... Um, things to be done. They want something that's real and honest. And so I thought, well, you know, over the years, I've been uh, talking with people for, <laughs> I've been in the media industry for about a little over 40 years. And mm -hmm. uh, during that time, I've talked to all kinds of people, producers, directors, um, other actors, uh, just normal people, engineers. Um, and they have honest questions. And I would answer, mm -hmm. at least try to answer as many of those questions as I, as I could. And so, um, I decided, you know, I ought to write a book about is God real for those mm -hmm. people that are wondering about that. And especially today, because people want to know, uh, again, as I said, uh, what's really authentic and what's real and without a lot of slick stuff. So I tried to make the book as honest as I could and uh, something that really communicated the, who God was or who God mm -hmm. is. Yeah. That's awesome. What was the process of making it like? Like, were you doing a lot of research? Is a lot of this just questions that you had heard before? Um, what were you trying to address when you were really getting at the foundations of the book? Well, I originally finished the book in the year 2000. Now, that's a long wow. time ago, right? 23 years ago. I was working in uh, the New York uh, media industry, and uh, a lot of the people that I came in contact with had, had a lot of these questions. And so I started to write a book to try to give them answers. I, I looked around. I didn't find anything that was quite what I liked. So I wrote the book. And uh, I couldn't get it published. I mean, 
you know, George mm-hmm. Sarris is a nobody. Nobody knew where I was. And at that time, mm-hmm. you couldn't self-publish the book. You could only mm-hmm. get it through a regular publisher. And so I just set it aside and uh, didn't think about it too much. That's why I went to my second book, uh, Heaven's Doors, talking mm-hmm. about is God good? And uh, then, I don't know, about three or four years ago, I thought, you know, I ought to get that book out and see if I can update it, do a little more research and uh, see if I can, if it's, you know, as good as what I thought it was back in 2000. So I, mm-hmm. I took it out and uh, started doing a lot more research on it. And uh, that's what came as a result. That's awesome. Yeah. Can you walk us through the flow of the book a little bit, like your intentionality of where it starts and the, the journey it kind of takes you on? Yeah, um, the title is kind of interesting because the title is uh, Searching for Truth in Vegas, Hollywood, mm-hmm. and Bethlehem. And uh, Vegas really is relating to chance, right? What do you have? You go to Las Vegas, you throw the dice and it comes out to be whatever it happens to be. And uh, that's really evolution. You know, the the standard Mm -hmm. view in our culture today is that mankind and the world and the the universe, whatever, just sort of happen to come together by chance. And Mm -hmm. so the first chapter really deals with that particular issue is chance the source of where things come from. Mm. Uh, Hollywood is the force of Star Wars. Back in uh, the late 1960s, there was a lot of uh, talk about transcendental meditation that got into the Mm. New Age movement, all that kind of stuff. And and this whole idea of the force, in fact, George Lucas, who wrote and produced um, Star Wars, which by the way, uh, originally was distributed in only 32 theaters around the country, Mm. and it just exploded in terms of yeah. its uh, success, people just saw it. It was it was kind of taking um, an old Western and putting it into the future. And right. uh, it was kind of really cool. And, and the way he did it, it was really, he did a, a wonderful job of that. But uh, anyway, he was involved in something called EST, which I can't remember what it, it's, um, Earhart something sensitivity training or whatever, I don't know. But it was kind of this Eastern mystical kind of idea. And he took a lot of ideas from Zoroastrianism, which is the the good and right. the bad forces that exist, et cetera, and mm-hmm. combined it with some science stuff because it was science fiction and it just took mm-hmm. off. I mean, people just became really excited about that. And so, you know, a lot of people think, yeah, there's this force in the in the uh, universe and, you know, someday I will become a part of that force. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's what Hollywood is about. And then Bethlehem yeah. obviously is Christianity. The problem that I see with evolution, just initial. Oh, by the way, then I, I go on through the the uh, the book. So, is there a God? What about evolution? What about Eastern mysticism? But then mm. getting into some questions about often have come up. People would say to me, "Well, is the Bible that we have today the same as the original Bible? You know, maybe right. it's just been really changed a lot over the years. I mean, you got to remember this is starting out in you know BC time frame, fifteen hundred years before Christ." And then it goes up until maybe possibly a hundred years after Christ. Um, so didn't it get a lot? And then it was copied initially by hand. So aren't there a lot of errors and mistakes in the Bible? So I deal with that particular issue as well. Um, what makes the Bible unique? Uh, why is it different from, uh, say, the Tripitaka of Buddhism or the yeah. uh, Vedas of Hinduism? Um the uh, Zendavesta of Zoroastrianism. So I go into that a little bit to talk about what those documents were like and how is that different from the Bible? What makes the Bible really unique? Mm -hmm. And then is Jesus the Messiah? That's a really big question. You know, Um, you've got a lot of people that will talk about, uh, well, just within the media industry, there's a lot of Jewish people and uh, they obviously do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And so that's one of the questions that would come up a lot during the course of Mm. my uh, discussions with people. Uh, Did Jesus really rise from the dead? That's a big question. Um, I mentioned in there, this is really true. When I went to get my blood, I don't say it's that detail, but when I went to get the blood test for my, to get married, Mm. there was a uh, a physician who uh, took the blood test and talked and he was an atheist, didn't believe in God at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, uh, and I said, well, you know, what about the resurrection? Ah, the resurrection. It's just a bunch of fairy tales. You know, Jesus. And at the time, by the way, this was in the early 1970s. I got married in 1971. Um, right around that time, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was some call, something called the Passover plot. Big, big mm-hmm. uh, 
book that was uh, uh, that came out at that time. And it was basically saying that Jesus swooned. In other words, he kind of went unconscious. They put him in right. the, the tomb. They thought he was dead, but he really wasn't dead. He got revived mm-hmm. in the tomb. And then, um, you know, that's what happened. So I said to him, okay, now you're a physician. And I said, um, if you had iron spikes, you know, stuck into your, your uh, wrists and into mm-hmm. your feet, and you were beaten by a professional executioner or a professional torturer, and uh, you were put into this cold slab uh, in, a, in a tomb, and you've got a two-ton stone in the front of it, and you've got a bunch of guards out in front of it that are guarding this tomb, do you actually believe that he kind of revived in it and uh, mm. broke out of these it was like 75 pounds of, uh, of uh, uh, spices that were in a, in a wrap in a mummy type thing that he right. broke out of those clothes and then he pushed over the two ton stone and snuck past the guards and then he appears to his disciples probably looking half dead. I mean, oh, mm-hmm. he just rolled from the dead. Is it, yeah. You know, if that had happened, would you be wanting to follow that being? Yeah. And say, yeah, I'm willing to die for that. I said, right. no, probably you'd want to just die. Yeah. <laughs> That's what rising from the dead is. I don't want it. Right. Yeah. And uh, also no food or water for all those days as well. That's right. Yeah. A good yeah. point. So all of that kind of stuff, you know, and I, I, it was really kind of interesting. Whoops. <laughs> Gotta turn this off. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, all good. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it was really interesting to talk to him about that. But that's a big question. Did Jesus really rise mm-hmm. from the dead? And then I think one of the, the biggest questions that people have, and this is this is something that is not an easy question to answer, but it's an important question to answer. If God is all-powerful and God is good and he's wise, why is there so much pain and suffering in the world? Yeah. Um, why do you have people with birth defects? Um why do you have uh, people that get into um, accidents? You know, mm-hmm. uh, why do you? Why would God allow torture? That's a big one. You know, I mean, torture mm-hmm. is purposefully inflicting pain on someone. Why would God do that? And another big question for the biblical people is: Why would God actually command His people to wipe out a civilization? Uh, when mm. they went into uh, Canaan. So those are some of the right. questions that I tried to uh, uh, answer and address in the in the book.